hi and welcome to geeks for geeks today we would be discussing the solution of the problem smaller on left in this problem you are given an array of n positive integers and for each element you need to look at the left hand side and say the greatest element that is less than the current number so suppose there is 5 present here and there is 1 2 3 and 4 so the greatest element less than 5 but greatest among themselves is 4 so let us first try to solve the sample test cases so for 2 there are no left elements that is why for 2 if there is no left elements it should be printed as minus 1 then for 3 okay we have a left element so if we have a left element that means that we can use that as a candidate for the greatest element but that should be less than the current element so the candidates are only 2 and it is also less than 3 so the answer is 2 for this value then we come across 4 now there are two probable candidates that are less than 4 on the left hand side that are 2 and 3 the greatest element among them are 3 itself okay now we come across 5 so for 5 we have 2 3 and 4 and the greatest element that are less than this is 4 itself okay then we have 1 for the greatest element that is less than 1 is nothing so we can say the value is minus 1 so hum aisa bol sakte hain aise hindi mein ki hame current element lena hai uske left mein jana hai aur sare elements dekhne hain ab jo jo elements usse chote honge वो प्रोबेबल कैंडिडेट्स हो सकते हैं मतलब वो आंसर हो सकते हैं अब उस आंसर हो सकते हैं में से जो सबसे बड़ा रहेगा दैट वुड बी आवर आंसर अगर हम लोग आंसर नहीं पा रहे हैं दैट मींस वी आर नॉट एबल टू गेट एन आंसर द वैल्यू रिवॉल्व डाउन टू द वैल्यू माइनस ओके सो होप आई एम क्लियर विद दिस नाउ द मोस्ट प्रोबेबल सोल्यूशन टू दिस एज फर्स्ट वी सिलेक्ट द कैंडिडेट फॉर ईच एलिमेंट सपोज वी हैव One, two, three, and four. So for each element, suppose we come across three, then we would have all the elements that are the probable candidates, and then we would select the maximum out of them. So what we would do is we would have a for loop from i is equals to zero to i is less than n. Then what we would do is we would also have a for loop, nested for loop. where j would be equal to 0 and j should be less than j should be less than i and then j plus plus so it should be less than i then what we can do is if the current element is less than a of i so if a of j is less than a of i okay then we would have a small value okay that is suppose 0 then what we would because it is given that we have positive ones so then we would take out the maximum and then we would take yes this is the answer if the value then also remains zero that means we are not able to get a candidate so the value would be minus zero okay minus one so now how can we proceed to proceed we need to iterate over all the possible candidates okay all possible candidates this is what you need to do i would just write candy okay all possible candidates now traversing all possible candidates and searching a particular value what is the best way to do that just try to think so the first probable way is to keep them in the sorted order now to keep them in the sorted order we can sort it but we want the dynamic sorting that when we insert the elements it would be already formed in the shorted order so the next thing that should click in our mind is the usage of priority queue the usage of set the usage of map these all things the and the usage of set a multi set also but we won't be taking into account because set and multi set performs the same so if there is a value 11 present as a candidate then either of them can be a value so even if we take all the unique values that would solve the purpose okay fair enough so till this point we thought of this thing okay now how would we keep that now suppose i 
suppose there is 1 5 and 4 and then suppose here the value is 3 itself now what we can do is suppose i am till this value then i would insert all these values in the sorted order if i insert all those values in the sorted order that would be in the sorted order because i would be inserting in either of these data structures if the all the values are in sorted order we can use a binary search for this so in binary search the normal binary search won't occur why because that would just tell us if the element is present or not but we want something else too we want the value that is greater than that so we have a concept of lower bound as well as upper bound so this is a prerequisite but still i would explain you just the de definition is enough to understand so if we talk about lower bound lower bound in binary search then it would tell us the first occurrence first occurrence if it is present if that is not present then it would tell us the next greater okay immediate next greater element if that is not present now let's talk about upper bound too if we are talking about upper bound which then definitely even if the value is present even if the value is not present it would definitely give you the value that is greater than the current value just greater than okay now we are done till this point now what we can do is we can use a lower bound suppose 1 5 and 2 then suppose 3 and the value we are trying to search is for 3 itself so we would have all these values in the sorted order in the either of them so 1 2 and 5 now after that what we need to do is we need to do a lower bound so if that lower bound is present that means if the element is present it would tell us the next greater element but if the element is not present if the element is present it would tell us the first occurrence if the element is not present it would tell us the next greater element so it would point here so if it is pointing here then if we go at this position then it would tell us a value that is less than that now let's take also a condition when the current value is present so we have one two one two three five and then again suppose we want to do it for three okay because it is not told that it, it elevated elements should be unique now suppose we are trying to find for this so the element would be stored in this fashion only now the lower bound would tell us this value so even if we subtract one value that would point us to this value and this value is less than that value okay so we can say safely say that even if the value is present even if the value is not present doing a subtraction of an iterator by one it would solve the purpose definitely okay till this point i should be clear okay so now let's do a selection of data structures so if we are using priority queue then we can also do a binary search and map is generally used for frequency and other stuff for hashing purposes so we can safely say that we can use set as the best candidate you can use priority queue too by the way okay so now let's start the implementation and you would get a better idea but there is one more case to handle okay there is one more case to handle suppose the value is 3 5 and suppose the value is again 3 so if we are doing a lower bound then the value of 3 then the value would be pointing to the 3 itself that is it dot begin not it it would be begin of set okay beginning point of the set now the beginning point of the set if we do a subtraction then it we won't be able to get a value and this is the condition when after doing a lower bound if it is equal to begin that means that no probable candidates would occur because the value it is pointing to would be less great would be equal or greater and those two are not the candidate so if even after searching the iterator is pointing to the begin value that means the value would be minus one for that current value okay hope i am clear now let us start the implementation so i would make it a because i am more accustomed to it we need to return a vector not an array so we would initialize a vector of int and name it as answer okay and the size would be n itself then what we need to do is we need to have a set of type int and name it as st 
then we would have a for loop int i is equals to 0 i is less than n and i plus plus now what we need to do is we need to search the value so auto it because it is more simpler auto it is equal to st dot lower bound of the particular a of i now there are two probable candidates either it would have a value or either it won't have a value so if it is pointing to st dot begin sorry for the spelling mistake yeah fair enough so if it is pointing to st dot begin that means answer of i would be equal to minus one else we would do it minus minus and then answer of this particular i is equal to the value of this it itself then we need to insert it for further processing so we would insert it as st dot st dot insert a of i then every iteration is done and we would return that so before doing the compile and run why don't we just do the stuffs so answer of n st dot begin st dot n yeah seems correct but let us just submit it and yes we got an ac but now let us do the dry run of the given sample test cases so first let us let me just change the color yeah color is already changed so first we would look for the set itself so if we are looking for the set there is no elements present so for two lower bound of two no elements present so it would point to the begin value if it is begin we would have as minus one the first value is minus one itself then moving forward we insert two itself then we come across three if we are doing a lower bound of three it would point at this not this position at the next position because it is less than so we would make it go at this position and we would insert it at this and then we would also insert two as well as three itself so now two and well as three is also present next we come across four so the lower bound of four would be pointing at this position so we would have this value three subtracted by one and we would insert eight as the value three itself then we would also insert four here then we would for five we would also do a lower bound the lower bound would point to here and we would subtraction by one and we would have this value and then we would insert the value four itself then we have one the lower bound of that would be the next greater element that is equal to two so two points to the begin value so if we do a minus minus there is no point in doing that so if it is equal to begin that means we would be assigning minus one so now let's talk about what is the time complexity of this solution so time complexity of the earlier solution if we are using a two nested loops then the time complexity of that solution was o n square the first loop is for iterating every element and the next loop is for iterating all the possible candidates now for this we need to go and learn about the time complexities of the data structure known as set so for set the lower bound does an operation of log n, cost log n. And this is doing big O of n. So for one operation, we are doing at most log n operation. So for n operation, we would be doing n log n operation. That is multiplying n with both sides. So the time complexity of this solution is n log n. And we are using a array of n. So we can say that yes, the time com space complexity is big of n. By the way, we can directly store the answer in the array that is given itself and the time complexity would be boiled down to the approach big of 1. I didn't do it so that I don't create confusion. So that's it for today. Thank you and have a nice day. If you face any difficulty regarding this question or understanding this question, you can connect with me on LinkedIn or post your doubts in the comment section. Thank you.